In this example, we're going to take the shell sign that you can see on the left, which we created in another tutorial, and we're going to edit the design and recalculate the toolpath to create the lakeside cabin sign that you can see on the right hand side. Let's just go and close this down, and then we'll go and open an existing file, and from the lakeside project folder I'm going to open the shell sign toolpath file and press open. So this is the copy of the shell sign project that we created in a previous session. So we're just going to briefly review what we did in that tutorial. So if we go ahead and tile the windows, so you can see we've got in the 2D view, we've got our layout for the sign, we've got some text, we also have this vector boundary. And then if we switch over to the toolpaths tab, we can see uh, that we've calculated all of the toolpaths for this sign and then if we go ahead and just click the preview and then preview all toolpaths you can see that's running the roofing toolpath and we've got our 3D finishing toolpath going across there next we've got the V card for the text and then we profile that out and so that was the finished sign that we left off with so let's just reset the preview close the preview toolpaths form down I'm going to go and switch back over to the drawing tab. We'll go into the 2D view and then we'll just use this option here to zoom to fit. And so now we're going to start to edit this design and start by making our job space larger to make a larger sign. Now I want to make a finished sign that's 18 inches by 12 inches, so I'm going to make my finished sign 19 inches by 13 inches to give us a border around the sign for our t profile toolpath. So let's go over to the job setup here. I'm just going to change that. So we're going to make that 19 inches in the width. And then for the height, we're going to put in 13 inches here. And I'm not too sure how thick to make my part just yet. So I'm just going to leave this the same at the moment. And we'll look at changing the thickness if I needed to at the toolpath stage. XY we're going to keep in the lower left and the modeling resolution I'm just going to up that to hide so that we've got more pixels to play with and I can go ahead and press OK so you can see that the software is warning us to calculate all of the toolpaths because we've altered the size of the part so we're just going to press OK as I plan to recalculate the toolpaths once I've edited the model and so now I want to scale up my job, so just to be sure I'm just going to use the layer drop down menu, I'm just going to switch on layer 2 just to make sure that there's anything on there, okay, so we can see we've got vectors on there, so if we just close that down, I'm just going to delete this vector as I won't need to use that cross section again, so I'm just going to select that and then right mouse click and just use the option here to delete that. I'm then going to box select everything in view here. And then we're going to go and set the size of that, so we'll go to set selected object size and then we'll go and give that a width of 18 inches and then I'm going to uncheck link XY as I want to put in a, an independent value in here and I'm going to go with a height of 12. So let's press apply there, you can see that it's been altered, you can close that down with all of that selected, let's go over to Transform Objects and we're just going to align that um, to the centre of a material horizontally and vertically. We can close that down. So let's just go and tile our windows. So we'll go to the 2D view control, tile vertically, put that in isometric view. And so the next thing I'd like to do is um, swap my shell for a different piece of clip art. I'm just going to click in the white space here just to deselect everything and I'm going to take the shell, I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to use the option to delete. I'm going to go into my clip art tab, see that's moved so I'm just going to swap that round. You can swap your tabs just by selecting them and moving them across. And then in here we're going to go and take a look at the animals and see what we've got in here. So I'm just going to go through the clip art tab and see what we've got. Okay, so I like this one, so I'm just going to double click that just to put that in place. 
and you can also access this piece of clip art from the project folder. Whilst that's in transform mode, I'm just going to take one of the corner handles, I'm going to hold down shift, and I'm just going to scale that up just so it sits within that dome shape. And if I wanted to, I could rotate that, so I'm just going to make sure my pivot point is in the centre there, so that we're rotating this piece of clip art about its centre point. And I'm just going to rotate that somewhere like that. They could move that over. You could just keep positioning this until you're happy with the layout. I'm just going to go into the modeling tab and then I'm going to go over here and align that and align that to the center of the material horizontally and vertically. I can close that down. So if we just take a look at the model there, if we just maximize the 3D view, we can see that uh, we've got quite an odd uh, appearance here where the part of the fishtail is coming over the banner and the reason for that is because our fish clip art is sat within the details level where this level is adding to everything below it so that's why it's coming over the ribbon here so what we need to do is just tweak our component tree order so that uh, the fish is still adding on top of the dome but not on top of the ribbon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the details level, I'm just going to select it and then I'm just going to drag that down underneath the banner. We can see now that that fish is still being added on top of our border and our dome and then the banner is merging in with everything else and so that's what we can see there. So now even though we can see the fishtail seeping through the banner, we have the correct order within our component tree and we have all of the correct combined modes and we'll look at adjusting the heights of the components once we've finished our layout. So let's just go into the 2D view control and we'll go and tile our windows vertically. And the next thing that I'd like to do is look at changing the text. Then I'd like to look at distorting the banner and then distorting the text to match the shape of the banner so that we get a more interesting banner there. So let's select the text here and then we're going to come over into the drawing tab we're going to use this option here to draw text. So it will pick up on the fact that it's a text entity and originally we created it in a limiting box. And so now we should be able to type in new text and change the font and it should stay within the same area. So in here let's just go and change our text. So we're just going to type in lakeside cabin. And we're going to change our font. The font I'd like to use is called Georgia. So I'm going to press G on the keyboard and that's going to bring up all of the fonts beginning with G. If you haven't got Georgia you can choose a font that you, you'd like to use. So I'm just going to go and select Georgia here. So the dimensions are staying the same. Vertical stretch, we're going to stretch the characters vertically and horizontally and then we could go ahead here and press apply. And you can see now that that's uh, replaced that uh, within the same area that we originally had that text. So let's just close that form down and I'm going to maximise the 2D view and then use this option here to zoom to fit. And so if we take a look at the text we can see that there's some overlapping areas with this particular font. Now most fonts are set up for printing not for CNC machining which is why you sometimes get these overlaps that we can see here. And so what we need to do is we need to either merge the shapes together or space them apart because when we come to calculate toolpaths on overlapping vectors like these, this will cause problems. So in this case I'm going to space them apart and to do that we're going to come over to this option over here to edit text spacing and curve. And so what this allows me to do, it allows me to come between two letters and I could look at spacing them out or bringing them closer together. You can see at the moment I have two arrows that are pointing towards each other. So if I click now, you can see that they're going closer together. Now I actually want to space these further apart, so to do that I need to hold down shift and we can see now that my arrow has changed. So I'm just going to click once, click twice, click three times and I like the space that we've got there. I'm going to come between the A and the K and again I'm going to hold down shift and then I'm going to click. I like the space that we've got there. I might want to do that again. I want to come over here and do that one again. 
then we'll come between the K and the E let's hold down shift I'm going to click, click and click see that's a bit too far so I'll just click that back without holding down shift to bring them closer together the E and the S are OK S and the I are OK, I and D let's bring the D and the E closer together so bring those in on two clicks I'm going to come to the A and the B I'm just going to hold down shift click and click to bring them further apart B and the I, let's bring them closer together so I'm not going to hold down shift so I'll just click once, maybe twice and then for the I and the N I'm just going to space them apart just once okay, so you can see now that we have uh, nice space in between each of those letters. So let's go into normal selection mode and then we'll go ahead and tile our windows vertical. So the next thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to look at distorting the shape of our banner to give it a more interesting shape. Once we've done that I'd then like to look at distorting the text to match the shape of the banner. Now we can't distort a 3D object and a 2D object at the same time, they have to be done separately. Now because I'm going to be changing the overall silhouette of my sign, I could take this outline vector here and just look at deleting that. So I'll right mouse click, use the delete option, as I could look at creating a new boundary once I have my new silhouette. So let's take that banner and I'm going to come over into the modeling tab and we're going to use this option here to distort selected objects. And so we're going to use the bound in box option and so we need to press apply and what that does it just creates this envelope around that banner there and then you'll notice that we're also in node edit mode so we have all of the functions uh, that we can use when we're in normal node edit mode so if I hover over this span here and right mouse click I can change uh, this span into a bezier curve and so we can see we've added these handles here I could go to the bottom and do the same or I could press B on the keyboard to do that and then so now what I could do is I could just box select these two handles and I could look at moving those up and then I could box select these two control handles and look at moving those down you can see that we're getting this nice uh, sort of S shaped um, banner here I can move that up a little bit more if I wanted and then maybe look at moving that down a little and across until I'm happy with the shape of my banner. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and use the option to bake distortion. So we're just making that distortion a permanent change. So I'm just going to go and press OK here. Now while I'm in the distort object form, I'm going to go and to distort the text. So I'm just going to go ahead and maximize the 2D view and then just zoom in there. Okay, so we're going to go again, apply a bounding box or we'll press apply here. The first thing that I'd like to do is just line up uh, my text into the center of the banner. So I'm going to take these two nodes here and just move them up a little, take these two nodes here and then just move them down so they're roughly in the middle of the edges of my banner and then again I'm going to hover over this span here right mouse click use the option to bezier and then do the same for the bottom so right mouse click or you could press B on the keyboard so then I'm going to take these two control handles and just move those up a little I'll take these two control handles here and just move them down and then we just start to uh, continue to tweak the position of these control handles or the main nodes until you're happy uh, with the positioning of the text against your banner. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that. I might want to move that one up a little bit more. So it's roughly in the centre of the banner there. So again, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to use this option to bake distortion. And so these are now vectors because we distorted the text. So let's close that form down and with that text selected let's just go over to edit objects and then we're going to group them just so it makes it easier for us to select when we come to run the vCarving toolpath at the end. So let's just go and tile our windows and then we're just going to look at altering the height here so that 
our banner is completely in front of the fish. So let's just maximize the 3D view. So I'm going to take that banner and to select that again to put it into transform mode. Then I'm going to use this blue option here that will allow me to view a short properties form for that banner. So here I could look at altering the shape height, so let's try and up that up to 0.6 and press space to enter that in. Okay, so you can see that that is pretty much almost there, so what I might want to do is just add in a very small base height, so just add in vertical height to the entire banner and now we can see that that is completely clearing uh, the fish there. So let's just close that down and then we'll go and tile our windows again. So the last thing that I want to do is add texture to the background of my sign inside of the inner vector that we've got here. And so I'm going to create that texture from an imported photograph and I want it to sit within the details level. So I'm going to select that to make, that, make sure that that is the active level. We can see that's bold. And then if I come over here to this option to create a component from a selected bitmap and we'll go into the project folder, you can see that I have a few photographs here of bark and I have a picture of stones. So I'm going to use the stones image, so I'll select that one and we're just going to open that up. So we can see that it's automatically added a grayscale to the 2D view and I can also see that there is a component here in my component tree and we can see that displayed in the 3D view. So first let's just go and set the size of that. So if that's selected, let's just go over to the transform objects and set selected object size. This time I'm going to link XY so that it scales in proportion. We're going to give that a width of 17, press apply and then we'll press close. Then we're just going to align that to the center. So with that selected, let's go to align selected objects. We're going to align that to the center of the material vertically and horizontally. Then we can close that down. Let's just put this in isometric view over there. Now while I edit this, I'm just going to switch everything off. Uh, so I'm just going to switch off the banner level, switch off the base level, and then switch off that fish component. Now when you create a component from an image, you will pick up on a lot of noise within that image, unless it's a very clean image file that's been created in a graphics program. So any digital photo will have this sort of speckling appearance. So normally the first thing that we do with a texture is to go ahead and smooth that. So with that selected, let's go over to the apply smoothing filter to a selected components and we can see that that's done that at a default of around 50%. So what I might want to do is just apply a little bit more there. Okay, and so I'm happy with that. We've really reduced the amount of noise that's within that image there. So let's go ahead and just press OK. Now the software has automatically assigned a Z height according to the light and dark areas in the image, with the white areas being high and the black areas being low, and everything else is scaled in between. Now because this height is automatic, it's a good idea for you to go ahead and check the height of that component. So with that component selected, let's go over to the properties form. You can see it's just under 0.3, so that is quite high, so I'm just going to reduce that down to 0.1, then press spacebar to enter that in. You can see now that's been reduced and we've got a nice uh, smooth flat image there. So let's just go and close that down. And so now we have a nice 3D texture that will go into the background of my sign. So the next thing we need to do is crop this component to this vector here. We want to crop it to the inner vector, the inner border that we've got. So to do that, I'm going to select my component first. I'm going to hold down shift and select that vector. I'm going to come up to the modeling tools and use the option here to clear area of selected component outside selected vectors. You can see that's just removed everything outside of that vector that we had selected there. So let's just switch on that fish component. 
Okay, so we can see that the texture is adding on top of the fish. That's why that texture is sat on top of the fish there. So what I need to do is to change the combine mode of the stones. So I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to change the combine mode and set that to merge so that everything is blending in with each other. If I just maximize the 3D view, we can see now that we are losing elements of that fish. So what I may want to do now is just look at altering the height of the fish. So I'm going to select the fish and then go into the properties form by clicking on that blue square at the bottom there. And then here I'm just going to look at increasing uh, the base height. Let's try 0 0.01, press space to enter that in. Okay, it's not doing a lot, so I'll try 0 0.03, space, and maybe I'll just go with 0 0.05. We can see now that, that is completely clearing that texture there. So I'm happy with that, so let's just close that down, put that back in isometric view. And so everything's now merging together, but the overall level is adding on top of the base level. So if we switch that on, we can see it's just adding on top there. And so if we just uh, zoom in to this area over here, we can see we're getting these uh, little pixels that are being added. And so what I need to do is just look at my border. And so what's happening here is everything that's within the details levels adding on top and there's areas that are blending into that border there. So that's why we're getting this, um, these pixels that are coming up around the edge. So again I just need to tweak with my component tree. So I'm going to take that border and I'm just going to move that into the details level and then with that selected I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to change the combine mode of that to merge and so we can see now that we don't have any of those pixels uh, sticking up there. So now we have everything merging with each other within the details level. We've got the dome within the base level and then if we switch on the banner we can see here that the banner is merging into everything and where I've increased the height of the fish we can see that uh, I need to look at altering the height of the ribbon again. So let's just take that banner and we'll select that again to put it into transform mode so that I can access the short properties form there. And let's just go with a base height of 0 0.025. Okay, so you can see that's not doing a lot. And we'll try make that 0 0.4 and 0 0.05. So a lot of the times when you're dealing with height adjustments, it is a case of just tweaking until you're happy uh, or until the areas are completely covered. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So we'll just close that down, put that in isometric view. And then let's go into the 2D view control and we'll just tile our windows. So now that I've made all the changes I wanted to make to the design, what I need to do before I go ahead and recalculate the toolpaths is I need to make sure that I have a vector boundary to limit my toolpaths to. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to go and select all of those components by holding down shift. So they're all selected now and then we're going to come back up here and create a vector boundary from the selected components. And then let's just click in the white space just to deselect everything and we can see that we've got that vector boundary there. So now we can go and switch over to the toolpaths tab. And so before we go and recalculate our toolpaths we just need to double check our material setup. So let's just go into the material setup here. Uh, we can see straight away that we have an error message and it's telling us that the model thickness exceeds the material thickness. So I could go back into the modeling tab and make edits to the height or I could use a thicker material. So in this case I am just going to go with a thicker material in here. You can see our model thickness is just over one inch so I'm going to go and change my thickness to be one and a half inches here. We're going to set the Z0 to be on top of the material block. Our XY position will be in the lower left hand corner. Again, we'd like to put a small gap above the model around 0 0.05 just to allow for any inconsistencies within, within our material so that we avoid any flat spots. Again, let's just check uh, the rapid C gaps above the material so that they're high enough to avoid any clamps that we may have in there. 
we'll check our home and start position and if you plan to actually machine the example shown in this tutorial then it's very important that you calculate all the toolpaths using parameters and settings that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling that you have available and the material that you are using. So we'll go ahead there and press OK. And so the software will tell me that we need to recalculate the toolpaths because we've made some alterations to the material setup and we were warned of that earlier so let's just go and press OK here. So we're going to go and select the 3D roofing sign toolpath. I'm going to use this option here to edit the toolpath. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we select our new vector, our vector boundary that we've got here. I'm just going to go and check everything else. Again, I'd still like to use a quarter inch end mill. I could go ahead and press edit and then check the parameters in here. I'm happy with those, so we'll go ahead and press OK. Again, we're going to use the selected vector. I'm going to put an offset in there. We're also going to put in uh, the same machine allowance as we did in the previous example. Roofing strategy, we're going to sea level raster that and then we could go ahead and call that 3D roofing sign. We'll go ahead now and press calculate. So let's just preview that selected toolpath. You can see that's uh, showing us that virtual simulation there. Okay, so let's just maximize the 3D view. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So we've got our steps there and we can see it's hogged out a lot of material. So let's just put that back in isometric view. We'll go ahead and press close. Now we'll go to view, we'll tile our windows vertical. So then we're going to go and select the 3D finish sign here. Again, we're going to use the edit toolpath option. You can see here that we've got an eighth inch ball nose, that's okay in this case. Again, we're going to go to the selected vector, have a small offset there. We're going to raster that, raster in that at a 90 degree angle, so that's going to cut parallel to the Y axis. I must make sure that I select my vector here, and I could go ahead and calculate that. Again, it's just working that out there, so we've got a lot more detail for it to um, calculate there. Okay, so you can see the software's calculated that for us. So let's go and preview that and see how that would look when we cut that out on our CNC machine. So let's just maximize the 3D view there. Okay, so you can see we've got a lot of detail in there. The tool's getting into the texture and the surface quality is good also. So let's just put that back in isometric view. Go to view tile windows vertical and we can close down that preview form. I'm going to go into the VCarve sign toolpath. So you, you just saw there that I just double clicked on that so if I just close that down you don't have to go into this option here to edit the toolpath. We could just double click on the actual toolpath itself and that will open up uh, the form ready for us to edit. So again we need to select the text here Again, we're going to go to start depth of zeros. We're going to project the toolpath onto the 3D model. I'm going to go the same tool. We'll go ahead and press calculate. You can see that toolpath has been created there. Let's just maximize the 3D view. Then we'll go ahead and preview that toolpath. We can see that we've got some nice text carved into our ribbon there. So I'm happy with that. Put that back in isometric view. Let's close that form down. Go to view tile windows vertical and the last toolpath we need to look at is our profile cutout toolpath. So again I'm just going to double click on the profile sign here. I'm going to go make sure that I select that vector there. Again just go through the settings within that form. So I've got the quarter inch end mill. It's going to cut that in three passes. It's going to machine outside the vectors. We don't want tabs in this case. We're going to assume that we're using a an appropriate hold down system for this job. And we'll just call that profile sign, press calculate. Let's go ahead and preview that. If we just maximize the 3D view, we can see that we actually haven't cut into our profile here. 
or at least we haven't cut all the way through our material and I can see here that I should have been a little bit more careful when calculating the toolpaths as we can see it hasn't cut all the way through so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to come over to this option here we'll use the undo last option I'm going to double click on the profile sign we can see the cut depth is still set to the material thickness of the last sign so here we're just going to put in 1.5, that's the material thickness. If you've forgotten the material thickness, you can always press Z equals and it will automatically put that value in there for you. So again, let's go through these settings and we'll go ahead, press calculate, then we can preview that. You can see now that that's cut all the way through that sign. And so really, this is a good example of how valuable the toolpath preview is, as it allows us to check the toolpath before we actually run this on the machine. And so we can spot any errors like this caused by rushing through the form in this case. So let's just go and double click on the waste material. We don't need to see that. And so we can see what the part will look like when we cut that out on the assumption that we have set the material and the machine up exactly as we have done in the software. And so now we could go ahead and save out these toolpaths. So to do that, we just go and just first we'll close down the preview toolpath form. We'll go ahead, select the 3D roughing sign. I'm going to come over here to save toolpath toolpaths to be saved we can see the toolpath that we had selected is listed here so that's okay then we need to select the appropriate post processor for uh, your machine so we could just use the drop down menu here if you've already saved toolpaths before the software will automatically save the last post processor that you used then you just go ahead and save the toolpath and then this is the actual file that you then go ahead and take over to your machine and run that toolpath on. So we'll cancel that and you go through the finish again same post processor save that and then you'll go through the others also. So let's just close that down let's go back to that preview and so that completes this tutorial where we've looked at how we could take an existing file that contained vectors and a model and toolpaths and we altered the design using various modeling and text editing tools. We also looked at importing a component from a bitmap to create a textured background and then we took that finished part and recalculated all of the toolpaths to this new design. And so at this point it would be a good idea to go ahead and save that. So let's go to file, we're going to go save as and in the project folder we're going to call this Lakeside Toolpath and then you can access that from the project folder.